What's up guys welcome back to another interesting video on my channel and today I'll be reviewing something special the Alpha Droid 1.8 so I've been using this custom room on my Poco X4 Pro for a while now and let me tell you I just loved it why watch the video till the end to know that so I'll be talking about everything starting from the software to its cons so before we get started as you know that only 16% of the people watching my videos are actually subscribed to my channel so make sure to subscribe my channel for more interesting stuff like this now let's move on to the main point starting with the boot animation so it's a w from me i mean i haven't seen this type of boot animation in a long time the last time it was called was so so yeah that's it now talking about the software so firstly shout out to Lucifer Morningstar for this incredible work love you bro so firstly let me tell you that this room obviously comes on Android 13 and it's based on the latest security patch of 5th August 2023 and for the kernel you get the stock kernel in fact I'm using the latest Google Apps build of this room and you also get the vanilla build so yeah that's for the software part Talking about the launcher, so that's crazy. So this ROM comes with the stock alpha launcher that has a lot of features and customizations in it. So firstly, when you move into the wallpaper and style section, you get a lot of wallpapers that comes inbuilt in this ROM like the alpha droid themed wallpapers and the abstract pattern wallpapers. Moving back, you get different color patterns according to the wallpaper colors and if I select this color pattern, the color of the system gets changed, which is nice. Moreover, you also get features like dark theme and themed icons and you can also change the app grid size directly from here. And in fact, you can also change the icon and the font size. So yeah, that's great, but there's more. Now moving on to the home screen settings, you get more customizations regarding icons, home and much more. So firstly, moving into the icons tab, you can customize the icon size, font size and even the lines for the app labels. Like firstly, if I decrease the app size to 50%, you can see that it looks very small. And now if I want to increase or decrease the app font value, you can even customize it like this. And now on the top, you get a feature for the icon packs. So when you open it, you can customize your app icons according to your choice. Like right now, I have set it on the default one, which looks kind of boring. But if I select the Vera outline and move on to my home screen, as you can see that it replenishes the home screen and even the app drawer and gives some kind of a neon vibe to the app icons. Now moving back, you get customizations for home screen. So when you enter the section for home screen, you get a lot of features like you can lock your home screen layout where you cannot add any apps and widgets after that. You get features like double tap to sleep and even you can enable or disable the wallpaper scrolling for white wallpapers like right now I have enabled this option and now if I move on to my home screen the wallpaper doesn't scroll and now if I disable this option my wallpaper some kind of scrolls in the way where I swipe my screen. Moving down you can also get features like hot seat background so when you enable it you can see it some kind of sets a dock for your app and even you can also control the background transparency of this hot seat background. Now moving down, you can also get customizations for the Google search bar like you can increase and decrease the corner radius of your Google search bar like this. So yeah, it's kind of nice. Now talking about the app drawer features, you can customize the app background opacity and even the row height for the app drawer and other features like themed icons so yeah, that's for the app drawer. Talking about the recent menu, so you get many features like you can see the memory info directly from the recent menu and apart from this, you can access features like screenshot, google lens, lock app and clear all button. So just enable all these options so as to access these features and even you can control the background transparency of the recent menu but apart from this, how can we forget the shake to clear feature, so yeah, it's really nice. Now for the pre-installed apps, so as this is a gapps build so you get the play store pre-installed which works fine and some other pre-installed apps like the modded dialer that can record calls of the other person without letting him know that the call is being recorded. And apart from this, you also get the alpha droid exclusive apps like the clock app which looks like a normal clock but if you take a close look, you can see the second hand live which I found really cool and when you look at my home screen, the clock widget is also from this clock. And it looks perfect for me though. 
Now you also get the MIUI camera that works fine and as usual it takes videos on 1080p 30fps at its peak. Now if you are looking at the Dolby Atmos so it's not real cause I flashed the Dolby Atmos Magisk module on Magisk so yeah no Dolby. Now the things are gonna get spiced up from here. So talking about the features and customizations which is the main highlight of this room. So when you move on to the settings, you get a tab right at the top called alphabet. So it is much more than the way it sounds. So when you open it, just look at this. I mean you get a lot of customizations for every single part of this room starting from the user interface to the charging sounds. So firstly when you open the user interface tab, you get more features. So firstly starting with the ambient display or the AOD features, so you get features like wake screen for notifications that wakes up your lock screen when a notification arrives. You also get features like always show charging which turns on the always on display while charging which I personally use to avoid battery drain rather than using permanent AOD. Moving down you also get the edge light features that trigger light on the edges of the screen when a notification arrives which looks really amazing in the lock screen. In fact, you can customize the edge light colors according to your choice. Moving back, you get the ambient customization features which I really like the most. Why? Let me tell you. So when you open it, as you can see, you get features like ambient text by which you can set text on your always on display like this and even you can change the alignment of it according to your choice. But the best feature I personally like is the ambient image. I mean you can set your local photos on the always on display for example I want to keep this photo on the always on display so let me just apply it. As you can see it gets applied for the always on display which I found really cool and this feature only exists within this room. So yeah a big thumbs up from me regarding that. Moving back into the user interface setting you can also enable or disable the charging animations, set full screen apps and even you get two different lock screen animations like right now I have set it on scale which looks like this and when you choose CRT the lock screen animation changes. Below this you also get an option to customize your monet settings so when you open this tab you can customize your monet theme according to your choice like right now I have set it on vibrant and now after selecting fruit salad the system color gets changed. Even you can control the luminance and the chroma key from here so as to customize the colors. Going back, things starts to change from here. Firstly, you can see that you can customize your brightness slider styles. Like right now, I've set it on the default one which looks actually very boring. But as you select any of the brightness sliders, I mean just look at them. Every single one of them is dashing and you get a lot of brightness slider options. But from all of this, I personally like the outline one which looks really hot in the dark theme. Moving back, you can also customize your notification styles too. But when you enter the section, you can see that you get a lot of presets of notification too. But right now, I can't show you the application because I have no notifications on my QS panel. But I can assure you that my experience regarding the notification customizations was really perfect. Moving back, you can also customize your QS panel styles from here like right now I have set it on the default one and now if I select the new morph outline as you can see that the style of the QS panel gets changed and moving up you get the what? Bruh. Cyberpunk. I think it was supposed to be cyberpunk. Yeah, when you apply it as you can see that it looks really great on the QS panel and let me tell you something that this room has got the most number of QS styles than any other rooms. Like I really love the outline style which looks lit in the dark mode. So keep that in mind. In fact you can also customize the UI styles from this tab like when you open it you get a lot of UI styles and I personally like Shishu styles like when I select the Shishu Al um, uh, uh, Sorry 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 sorry. I mean the Shishu amalgamation style. Does it sound like that? I don't know the proper pronunciation for this. It changes the color pattern of the UI and now if I select Shishu Knights, you can see the wallpaper in the background of my UI so I personally like the Shishu and I'm not gonna repeat that word, you know what word, cause it's really cursed. Moving back, you can also customize the setting styles like right now I have set it on dot and now when I select the NAD, as you can see that the system style gets changed. Moving down you can also customize the navbar style like right now I've set it on motto so if I click nexus the navbar style gets changed and I kind of like the style too. 
Going back, you can also customize the font style of your system and you get a lot of font presets as you can see. I mean, when I click on nothing dot style, as you can clearly see that the system has opted the font and now if I select Linot, again the font style gets changed. So yeah, that's cool. Now moving back, you can also customize the signal icons like you get a lot of signal packs. So right now I've set it on the default one which just looks so shabby. But if I choose this option Aurora, I mean you'll just look at the icons. I mean they are amazing. Moving back, you can also customize the signal and Wi-Fi icons like firstly you had a lot of presets for both of this and now when I select Plumpy for signal and Aero for Wi-Fi, it looks something like this which is just lit. Apart from this, you can also customize your app icons like I mean you get a lot of app icon presets. So yeah, that's for the user interface settings. Now let's talk about the status bar. So moving into the status bar section, you get features for status bar icons and even you can customize your clock like you can set whether you want to keep it on the left or right side of your status bar. And moreover, you can also change the clock style from here like I have selected the sharp gradient corner and as you can see, the clock style gets changed. Moving back, you can also get features like network traffic indicator to indicate the upload and download speed but I really like the feature for keeping logo on our status bar. Like right now, I've set the Xbox one and now if I select the ROG logo, it gets changed. So yeah, that's a pretty cool feature. Now moving down, you also get features for battery styles for your status bar like right now I've set it on the dotted circle and now if I select the landscape arrow, the battery icon gets changed. Apart from this, you also get an option called the battery bar which displays the battery percentage of your system by displaying this kind of line on the top of your screen which is a really helpful feature and the color changes according to the battery situations. So that's for the status bar features and now let's talk about the QS panel features. Moving on to the QS panel section, the first thing that occurs is the QS header image. And when you click on it, you can customize your QS header image like after I have applied the option, the header image occurs on the top of my QS panel. And you also get many QS presets for customizing the QS panel. But the best feature I liked about this ROM is the local QS image. I mean you don't get this option in any other room and you can select local QS images according to your choice from your gallery but there are some consequences. I mean you can select any image but the best settings to apply the images are given below. If you want to flash this custom room then you can use my settings for better results. Moreover you can also change the opacity level, height and even the side and top padding from here and in my personal experience you should definitely use this feature in dark. Moving back, you can also control the QS transparency from here like this but moving down, you can also change the number of columns from here like if I select 3 columns, the number of column gets changed. Even you can also customize the animation styles from here which is again a very cool feature like you get a lot of animation presets for the QS styles and you also get an option to display the data usage in the bottom of the QS panel. So yeah, that's all for the QS panel features. Now moving back, you also get features for buttons, notifications and navigation which I'm not gonna cover cause the video is gonna get really long. For the lock screen, you get a lot of lock screen clock styles and even you can customize the position of the clocks from these options. Moving into the sound settings, you get features like pulse so when you open it, you can customize the pulse for your ambient display, lock screen and even the navigation bar. And let me show you how it displays while playing a song. So currently I'm playing a song and you can see that my nap bar always on display and even the lock screen is showing this kind of pulse patterns during playing the music which looks really cool by the way. Even you can customize the pulse features according to your choice. Moving back, you get features like adaptive sound and moreover you can set custom volume panel like right now I have set it on default and when I select realme UI styles panel. The volume panel gets changed so yeah i really like the realme volume panel moving down you also get some call vibration features so yeah that's for the sound features now talking about the miscellaneous features so firstly you get the game space so when you add any games here you can display the fps and increase the gaming performance of the games 
Moreover, you also get spoofing features like unlock higher FPS in games and unlimited photo storage for Google Photos that works fine without any problem. Moving down, you also get the parallel space where you can set up different accounts for the selected app which is a really helpful feature. So that's finally over for all the alphabet customizations and features but apart from this, there is something more. Moving into the sound and vibration features, you can set custom charging sound from here like you get some pre-built sounds but you can also set your own charging sound according to your choice. So guys, that's for all the features and customizations of this ROM. <sighs> I'm really tired. And now let's talk about the performance. Now talking about performance, so it's amazing. I mean, when I ran Antutu, I got a score of about 460k which is insane. And even while running CPU throttling test, I was stunned. I mean, I ran the CPU throttle test under 100 threads for 10 minutes and the CPU throttled to 95% of its max performance giving the maximum GIP score of 231k which is just amazing. So now let's move into the most awaited section. So talking about the gaming performance, it performs outstandingly well here too. I mean, as usual, I played 3 TDM matches and 1 Livic match back to back without any break and let me tell you that the gaming performance was amazing. So firstly, let me tell you that you get the 90 FPS unlocked for the smooth graphics but I played in extreme settings for better consistency. So for the first TDM match, I got an average of 59 FPS consuming 2% of the battery. For the second TDM match, the results were mostly the same and for the third TDM match, I got the same average and the battery consumption was just 1%. Now talking about the Livic match, so I got an average of 59 FPS consistently and only in some situations the frame drops to 50 FPS but they gain the consistency again in 1-3 seconds. So the gaming performance is also outstanding. For 5G, so yeah, 5G works fine without any problem and I also ran a speed test to check the speeds out and yeah, it was fine. Now talking about the battery backup, so I got an average battery backup of about 7 hours 30 minutes on heavy usage which is insane and of course I used my phone on 120Hz and for normal usage you can consider about 8 hours, so yeah that's great. Now if I talk about the cons, so I just had two minor problems. Firstly you don't get the google app pre-installed and as a result while setting up your phone you cannot restore the online backup for your apps from your google account and the second one is just personal that is the dolby atmos so i hope the developer might add google app and the dolby in the next update and apart from this i have no other issues now if i talk about my experience and conclusion about this room so i will just say one thing this is my favorite room from now on. I mean, there are no other rooms that provide such insane customizations except for Rising OS and Evolution X. And it's probably the best room out for Poco. So if you are looking for a room with insane amount of customizations, this is the best room. And also for Absolute Gaming, it is one of the best rooms. So if you want to flash this room, you will require the AOSP recovery, link in the description. And I have also mentioned the flashing tutorial link in the description. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to like it, share it with your friends and most importantly sub to our channel and join our telegram group and channel for the latest updates. So goodbye and take care.